good evening everybody thank you very much for joining in this side rahul magan here as a chief executive officer of treasury consulting llp and today we are going to cover a very dedicated video which is on one of the valuation adjustments we have which is known as credit valuation adjustment shortly known as cva cva turning out to be very very important not only for corporates but also for the banks and also for lot financial institution in fact uh, the 100% credit of the valuation adjustment will go to the volcker school that it happened post 2008 when the volcker committee volcker was uh, mr volcker was one of the ex federal reserve chairperson and he said that uh, bank should uh, you know uh, keep both the business away which is the business of investment banking and others they should keep both the business away but nonetheless so today we are going to cover about about credit valuation adjustment this is very very important topic and uh, especially for bank and all those those who those who are dealing with the those who are dealing with the uh, financial derivatives so what do you mean by credit value what do you mean by credit valuation adjustment credit valuation adjustment is probably the most widely known and best understood of the xva xva stand for valuation adjustment shortly credit valuation adjustment captures the discount to the standard derivative value that buyers would offer given the risk of the counterparty default basically this covers the counterparty take a simple example you are cognizant and you are selling dollars suppose today you are selling 1 million dollar to a bank called jp morgan chase us you are an american entity jp morgan chase is an american entity but there is a concern at both of side what is a concern that you might default now jb morgan would continue to have a have a concern that anything could happen to Cong, uh, to cognizant uh, it might default they might lose the client they might lose their value they might uh, lose a significant part of their revenue anything could happen now because of such fluctuations in the market such because of the such craze they took the counterparty position in the market now note very carefully that the cva stands only covering the credit risk cva has nothing to do with the interest rate risk cva has nothing to do with the foreign currency risk it has nothing to do with that it only covers the credit risk so if you are doing a swap the valuation of the cva remains intact if you are doing a foreign exchange derivative like option it would remain in, in, intact if you do a forward contract it would remains intact so everything remains intact Uh, but it only covers the credit risk and how you can measure the credit risk generally how people take cva people take cva based upon uh, you know your so called uh, cds credit default swap but as we very well understand that over the period of the time lot of financial instrument came forward especially jp morgan goldman sachs and credit suisse they came up with lot of new financial instruments i'm not saying that the valuation is arcane in nature of course it is it is not easy to understand that there are lot of formulation and combinations in that regards but at the same time they are really good they are really good financial instrument so what exactly you know uh, so there are lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, variants of of credit default swap came into the market like total return swap asset swap bond swap equity swap amortizing swap libor fiat swap there's lot of kind of interest a uh, lot of kind of cds we have now in the market different kind of cds single trigger cds multiple trigger cds and all so generally how we had cva is via cds this is what we have in the books but if you go in the real life market cva is held in the interbank market now in the interbank market jp morgan is taking a position for cognizant and jp morgan will has this with his counterbank say deutsche deutsche will has this with hsbc hsbc will has with city city with has with bank of america bank of america has with say uh, standard chartered standard chartered it has with rbi as well as bank of scotland and so on so forth this is how cva works so cva you take the position as you only take the credit risk position now please don't miss don't be misguided yourself that cva do not take other position cva only take cva only take that position it only take credit position now cva if you go to point number 4 currently the industry is revisiting the blanket use of cds via cva calculation this is due to the reduced liquidity in the cds contracts flowing from the lower participation by the banking intermediaries reacting to the banking regulations such as volcker rule as we already told you that volcker has clearly said that like before 2008 all the uh, the banks who used to have an investment banking division these banks are going to put the money of the client at risk in the derivative position and created a huge leverage 
and what did happen 2008 so there was a you know what did happen in 2008 original pool is of 1 million derivative taken 1 billion derivative of derivative taken 100 billion and ultimately when it busted the rest is history the rest is history so it so henceforth the people have decided the volkers said that investment banking should be should kept away from the normal derivative business volker never said that the banks should close or wind up their investment banking shop no this was clearly misunderstood but yes volker clearly said that the positioning which banks are taking on the credit their own the money of the investment banking should be stopped because these such positioning will hamper the market and such positioning will create a huge leverage and such kinds of incidents will surely come in near future and over the period basel 3 came forward and basel 3 put lot of uh, you know permutation in combination like cet common equity tie ratio additional tie ratio hybrid capital ta tlsc total loss of absorbing capital so they did lot of uh, lot of that stuff so what it happened they came up with something which is known as valuation adjustments and in that they clearly said that you know uh they are going to be multiple valuation adjustment that is going to be cva credit value adjustment debit value adjustment funding value adjustment cost you know uh regulatory capital value adjustment interest rate risk free uh rate capital uh, valuation adjustment and all so lot of things were said in that regards and i think that today banks are following lot of valuation adjustment and everything will fall under pillar 3 of uh, bis and uh, this is basically pesal 3 and if you can look at the annual report of any of the bank whether it is a jp morgan uh, you know credit suisse goldman sachs bank of america deutsche and all you will see that uh, they all following it that in fact when it comes to one more which is var they following different kind of var also var stands for value in the next video we try and cover more about uh, you know uh, how exactly you calculate the cvs calculating like this now this is something which we want me to show to you cva uh, would uh, cv cva cap cva calculated like this now how cva does this cva is nothing but rate value adjustment is probability sorry the present value of ead ead is the export exposure as uh, sorry a mistake exposure at default what would happen if this default so cognizant has 100 million dollars with jp morgan for 2 years Today is approximately second of October. You has for two years, which means second October 2018. And suppose you got six rupees as premium, and today's spot is trading at 68, so you got it at 74. Now exposure and defaults cover. What would happen? What is the total exposure at stake if you default? So the CVA would be the present value of the exposure at default, one minus recovery rate. Unfortunately, banks, books, and everything still considering recovery rate, but I strongly disagree with that because I always tend to believe that such kind of concept, recovery rate, and all these all are bookish concept. Because once somebody defaulted, somebody defaulted. So recovery is something something not possible, and especially in the case of derivative, how, how what what you can recover from it? Yes, there are there is another school of thought which tend to believe that uh, what do you mean by recovery rate is? They said that suppose you have a hundred million contract. So rather than defaulting on the complete hundred million contract, you know what uh, Cognizant is doing. Cognizant is defaulting only on uh, just two, just ninety five million contract, and they are acknowledging the five million of the contract. So it for them the there is a recovery of five uh, percent. But I tend to disagree with that because why I tend to disagree with that because once you take the serious position in the market, you will never take the break. You will you will not take the serious in the fall in the in breaks. example in the blocks yes it it might possible that you have a bank policy you you can take in the blocks but generally what you are doing you are always taking in 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 a, in a complete block of 100 million each in fact sometimes what i have saw that the in the bank market uh, collect the exposure complete so today founders and sold 1.5 billion dollar and they bought 1.2 billion dollars so rest 0.3 billion dollars it is a net exposure and And I have saw that banks are taking different positions. Sometimes they take cumulatively positions. Sometimes they take net of positions. Sometimes they take individual positions. So this is very difficult. And so the Fed consulting agency would always disagree with the word called recovery. But nonetheless, this is how banks are calculating it. Uh, so you have the present value of exposure as default into one minus recovery rate into the probability of default. You know what do we mean by probability of default? 
Now, probability of default is a uh, little bit complicated and uh, uh, basically it is uh, very subjective in nature in the sense like how would you calculate, uh, how would you calculate uh, probability of default, you know, because uh, what do you mean by probability of default? How would you calculate that whether your particular money is, is scheduled to default or not? Because it is the because uh, theoretically speaking, you can have hundreds of methods, but practically speaking, I really doubt that you might have any method because you know, sitting today when a global economy is moving towards a crash, and this is a structured failure which is happening in, in the world economy. You all know that now there is no risk free mechanism here. Uh, majority of the world are tw above, above 12 billion, 12 trillion dollars is under negative interest rate policy and so on and so forth. So, in my view, the definition of uh, uh, you know, the definition of uh, this so called uh, probability of default is something very bookish, but nonetheless, something which we cannot take, uh, so which we cannot change. So, theoretically speaking, this is how you will calculate the credit value uh, adjustment. Now, there are two ways to calculate the credit value adjustment. One way to calculate is which is known as asset CVA when the derivative is your asset, and secondly, once you calculate using liability CVA once the derivative is your liability. So you calculate both the way. Now you can net off also. Uh, please, sorry, my mistake. You don't. You should not net off because uh, aside CVA is calculating using a different way. On the other hand, liability CVA is calculating using a different way. Now moving down, these are the four approaches which uh, accounting uh, is suggesting to calculate the CVA. Of course, uh, the formula which we give to you, right? Uh, this is the formula, but you need to decide, like I said, that which block you are going to consider for that. Now one approach is the relative fair valuation approach. Here entity is calculating of the complete portfolio portfolio level of each derivative asset and the liability. Now I already told you that I cognizant today uh, sold $1 billion, so $1.5 billion, bought $1.2 billion, so net position is 0.3. So what you can do, you can calculate for two. For you in this, in this you have two different legs. One is one and a half, which you sold. Secondly, uh, Secondly, another is 1.3 which you bought. So you have two different positions which you need to cover. Secondly, the in exchange or full credit approach entity using the derivative standalone uh, where fair value. So you were calculating on the standalone like uh, like out of this 1.5 billion dollar there are 10 entities. So you are going to take 10 different CDS. I think this is really interesting because uh, the reason here is CDS is getting charged from the client rate. And I think every client is having different CDS. There is no doubt about that. So if con cognizant CDS will not be same as the Google CDS, and Google CDS will not be same as the Microsoft CDS. So everybody would have a different CDS. Now, when everybody would have a different CDS, now the question here comes. Now the question here comes that if you have a different CDS, then why you're doing in the portfolio? Whether you should do on the fair valuation of an individual derivative. Third is. Uh, the relative credit adjustment approach that is very very clear that it is you will create a relative position like the entity allocates a portion of the portfolio level credit adjustment to each derivative based upon the relative credit valuation each of the derivative. Fourth is the marginal contribution which you very well understand if you have a portfolio of one and a half billion dollars today you are accumulating 0.5 billion dollars so you will take a margin 0.5 so as soon as the margin keep adding you keep move on but marginal contribution approach would further divide it into two either you can do relative fair valuation in this also you can go for complete portfolio you can go on client on client now here also you have a billion dollar for one and a half billion dollar portfolio uh, somebody is coming and adding 500 million dollar choice is yours you can make this as a one block or you can make this as a multiple block so there are four different ways but uh, all the subscribers who are watching this video or listening this video should not very clearly that whatever you chose, you chose. You're not supposed to change it. Like today I'm following this, today I'm following this and all. So please be sincerely, sincerely enough while doing that. Because whatever, and Treasury Consulting LLP always recommends in exchange of full credit approach, wherein you will, you should take a serious in the, if you are a bank, then you should take a serious in the interbank market based upon individual derivative. If you are a company, then of course you, you have your own portfolio, then you, then you should take on a, uh, particular portfolio to portfolio basis. Uh, this is what we have. Uh, Treasury consulting LLP presence. We have presence everywhere. We have presence in uh, Dailymotion, Dropbox, LinkedIn, Skype, 
Google Plus, Google Blogs, SlideShares, WeChat, Facebook, Telegram, Snapchat, WhatsApp, YouTube. And keep moving, we're still expanding. We have uh, a very good and very good presence on uh, uh, crowdfunding platforms also, which is uh, uh, just uh, uh, we have a crowdfunding platform uh, wherein uh, I just forget the name, but sitting today, uh, yes, yes, it is Angelist, Crowdfunder, Rocket Hub, and Kickstarter. We are having uh, four cloud funding platforms and we are still growing. Keep moving. You are most welcome to visit us, to email us. This is our contact details. Welcome our website and uh, we keep updating a lot of new videos to you. Soon we will be covering an Excel wherein we will tell you that how to calculate the CV and how to do the accounting of the CV. But this will certainly take some time. And before winding up, we would like to update you that Treasure Consulting LLP now in the animation also. And uh, we are releasing a lot of videos pertaining to animation. We here, thank you very much. Have a good day, Harry.